R E E House. The Tree House. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tree House. I'm Kelsey, and I'm super excited to have you here because we have a lot of exploring to do outside here in nature. As you can tell, I'm here at the Shadbush Nature Center, and this is where our episode's gonna kick it off. So let's go check out what we've got going on. Hi, my name is Kaylin. I work at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center. Today we're going to read a story called Worm Weather by Jean Taft. Drip, drop, skip and hop, splish, splash, sidewalk dash. Worm, worm, wiggle, squirm, worm weather, coat, hat, rain goes splash, boots jump, old tree stump, big stump, puddle swamp, mud stop, belly flop, almost, dark cloud, very loud, bright flash, thunder crash. Quick race, pizza place, drip dry, mm. pizza pie, sun pops, drizzle stops, birds fly, rainbow sky, run, sing, playground swing. Worm, worm, wiggle, squirm, it's worm weather. The end. Hello everyone and welcome to Craft Corner. We have something super special today. Now, I don't know if you can guess it with all the things around me. I wouldn't have put it together myself either until I did the craft myself. We are going to be making our very own watercolor paint today. Usually, we just use paint to paint with and it's already made for us, but today we're going to learn how to do it ourselves, which is pretty awesome. So if you ever run out, or if you want an extra special color, you get to make it yourself. The stuff you probably already have at home. So, are you ready to get started with me? All right, our first ingredient we need is baking soda and vinegar. Now, do you know what happens when we put the two together? Maybe you've already done a science experiment at school where you have to make a volcano. So if we put these two together, they start to fizz a little bit. But we're not going to be using that much, but we have to be careful. So, we have our baking soda, and we need a tablespoon. We actually are going to need four tablespoons of baking soda. Do you think you can help me count that out? Awesome. All right, here we go. So we get one tablespoon. Perfect. Now two tablespoons. You really gotta shake it out here, don't you? Then three tablespoons. It looks like it's snowing. I like it. Okay, and are you ready for the fourth one? Here it goes. Filling it up. And I'm pretty sure it's overflowing on the side, so I'm gonna dump that in. All right, now we need two tablespoons of vinegar. Now remember, I said this is where it gets a little fizzy. So when we put in the vinegar, we're going to have to have another spoon to help us stir it together, okay? So here we go with our fizziness. With one and two. Can you hear it already? Look at it go. And now that it's fizzing, this is where we need to start stirring all the bubbles. And once the fizz goes away, that's when we can add our other ingredients. Okay, so we have it all stirred. Now I need to add some corn syrup and cornstarch. So two corns. We'll first start with some corn syrup. And we only need half a teaspoon for this, so a little baby one. Here it is. Aw, look at this little guy. So we're gonna pour it in and look, since it's syrup, it pours very thick and this is going to make sure that our paint gets nice and thick too and solidifies. That means dries up for us so that we can use it. 
Then we're going to need some cornstarch. And this time, we need tablespoons again. So we're gonna take our cornstarch and we're gonna have one tablespoon and two tablespoons. This one's a little bit easier because you get to scoop. Okay, now that we have our two tablespoons of cornstarch in there, we get to then stir it on up. So this might be a little tougher because it's starting to make its paste. It's kind of gonna be like a glue consistency. I think I actually need some more vinegar, just a splash. Here's the fizz again, I'm excited to hear it. There we go, <laughs> I love it. Okay, now that we got that fizz back, we're gonna keep stirring. Just like I said, it's gonna be like a glue consistency. So once we have it all stirred together, we're going to pour it into an egg carton. And like I said, I love doing this craft because we get to use a lot of the things we already have at home. So if you've already eaten all the scrambled eggs you can eat for breakfast, now we get to use the carton again. So now we are going to pour in our glue liquid into our little parts of our egg container. And we're only gonna do it about halfway up, not too full. And if we realize that we have more, we can then add it to other ones. Here we go. Ooh, and I think we have the perfect amount. Ooh, and one's leaking underneath. That's okay. That's the magic of paper towels. So, we have our glue liquid inside, or paint liquid, I should say. Now it's time to add some food coloring. Now, I was only able to snag the gel food coloring, but you can have the liquid droppers too. This is where we can start to experiment with colors as well. Now, to get a really dark color, it might take about 10 drops, but we can play around because you might want something like a light blue instead of a dark blue. So that might only take one and two drops, and then you can take something like a popsicle stick and start mixing it together. Because when we start to mix it, that's when our color starts to appear. And whatever color appears is going to be the color of our paint too. So you can make your perfect shade of blue or your perfect shade of brown, whatever you want. So I'm choosing kind of like a medium blue color right now. Not too dark, not too light, just right. Now I think my next one, maybe we'll go big. Maybe we'll get like a really dark one. Okay, one, two, three, four, maybe five. I'm saying five. Okay, let's see how dark we can make it. And we wanna make sure when we're mixing it, we mix all of the color because the more smooth it looks and all mixed together, the more beautiful our paint's actually going to be. Now, I have a bunch of blues, browns, blacks as my food coloring, but you might have yellow and orange and green, and you can start mixing the colors together. Then, once you have all of your colors in your six little compartments, all you have to do is set it out in a dry area, like your kitchen table or counter, overnight, and once you wake up in the morning, guess what? going to have some paint. All right, now it's time for us to see our paint dry. So over here, I have our paint. So it sat out overnight and dried completely. Now we get to add water to it to actually make it paint. So I have my blank sheet of paper here and then my trusty paintbrush. I think I might go with good old blue right here and just Get some and do you see that? We actually did it. I think I might have made paint. Now we might have a fluffy cloud that comes up. Do you see that? 
We made that together. I'm actually very impressed with how this turned out. That's a beautiful color. Should we see what other colors I've made? I'm excited. This is the great part about experimenting in crafts. You never know. I think maybe this corner, because why not? Ooh, I actually think this might be black. Let's try. It is! We successfully made black paint. Oh, this is a great, great craft. Look at how beautiful that is. Now I'm very excited for you to make your own paint at home. So make sure you make beautiful paintings, beautiful colors, and have a fun time making it. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Hi there, it's Mrs. Bethany at the Shelby Township Library. We're here one more time to talk to you in the old library before we move to our new library. But I do have some more new books to show you guys today and soon you'll see me in the new library where we can talk about all of our new books there too. But today we have a picture book called No Bunnies Here by Tammy Sauer and pictures by Ross Barak. It's about Bunnyville, the land of a thousand bunnies. Sounds like a fun place, right? But what would happen if a wolf wandered in? All the bunnies think they're gonna get eaten, so they pull out all their tricks and disguises to try to stop the wolf from eating them. But maybe the wolf just wants a friend. I'll have to read the book to see how it ends. And we've got another one by Seth Meyers with pictures by Rob Say Jr. called I'm Not Scared, You're Scared. And it's about Bear and his friend Rabbit. Bear, you can see, he looks like he's scared of everything. But Rabbit is really brave. He's not afraid of anything. But one day Rabbit gets into trouble and it's gonna be up to Bear to be really brave, even if he feels scared, and go help his friend Rabbit. So you have to read the story and see if Bear can be brave enough to save his friend. We've also got some new nonfiction books, stories with real pictures and facts about things. This one's a trip to the library with Sesame Street. So you can join all your favorite friends from the show, like Elmo and Cookie Monster and Zoe, and join them to go look around in the library. And they're gonna learn all about what a library is and how it works and what they have to offer. Or maybe you've started to see all those little yellow flowers popping up on your grass outside, some dandelions. This is a nice storybook that will also teach you about how dandelions grow. So it's got some cool pictures but it's gonna show you how little seeds grow roots and stems and leaves and eventually grow up into pretty little flowers dotting the lawn all over in the springtime. And that one's called My Life as a Dandelion. And for some of our bigger kid readers, if you're reading chapter books, we have New From Here by Kelly Yang. This book is kind of about kids just like you going through some of the tough times with COVID in the last few years. It's about 10 year old Knox who actually lives in China when coronavirus hits the country. So his mom decides it might be a better idea to move to California. Maybe it will be safer for him and his brother and sister. But unfortunately his dad has to stay in China to still work. So that's really hard. Plus it's hard being the new kid at school. Maybe you've been new in school before and it's hard adjusting and making new friends. And sometimes people aren't very nice. So this is a good story about being brave and resilient during hard times. And if you like funny books, we've got Confessions of a Class Clown by Ariane Costner. This is about Jack, who's the middle school class clown, and he loves to make all the kids laugh by making funny videos. You probably like watching funny videos on YouTube also, and so he really wants to make the coolest, funniest videos, but he realizes he kind of needs a partner and some friends to help him make cool videos if he wants to get him to look really good. But the problem is he doesn't have any friends. So he's gonna join a club at school to see if he can make a friend and go viral. And maybe if he makes a good friend, he'll realize that's the most important thing, even more than being popular with his funny videos. We are almost ready to open up the new library. You'll have to wait until June 25th, our grand opening day, to come see us and check out more fun books like this. And we hope that we'll see you that day or sometime this summer to see our new building, our new kids area, and all of our new books. Three, two, one, sign of the day. Hello everyone, are you ready to sign with me? You are? Perfect, because do I have the sign for you today. 
we're going to be learning about one of my favorite animal signs, and that is a turtle. Because today at the Shadbush Nature Center, we are going to be learning about a box turtle. So let's get our signing hands ready because we're gonna be making a turtle of our very own. So let's grab whatever hand we use to color with to make our shell. So it's going to just curve over like this. Now we need our turtle to come out. So our other hand is going to fold over like our fingers are sleeping, but our thumb, that has a job to do. It's going to be our turtle head and our turtle's gonna look all around underneath our shell. You see how I just placed my hand on top? That's what you'll do too. And our thumb is gonna move around like our turtle head. And this is the sign for turtle. Do you think you can make a turtle with me? All right, let's get our hands ready. Make our shell and make our turtle. Put it over and here we go. We have a happy little turtle, don't we? All right, now I know I'm ready to learn all about the turtle, are you? Let's go check out Pancake, our box turtle here at the Shadbush Nature Center. Hi everyone, Lizzie Schultz here, Nature Center Coordinator at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center here in Shelby Township. And today I have a very special friend with me. This is Pancake, and Pancake is an Eastern Box Turtle. Now, Eastern Box Turtles are found in Michigan. You could even find one in your backyard. Pancake is a turtle, but he can't swim, which is kind of funny because when you think of a turtle, you would think of someone who goes around in the water. But Pancake here, he can't even swim, not even a little bit. He actually uses these long digging claws for digging in the mud and burying himself deep, deep underground in the wintertime to stay warm. And then in the spring, he comes on up and he starts walking around looking for a girlfriend. Now we know that Pancake is a boy turtle because he has these red eyes, which in Eastern box turtles, that means he is a boy. So when he is walking around, if he finds another Eastern box turtle, he will look deep into their eyes. And if the eyes are yellow, that means it's a girl turtle. And he's gonna say, hi, how are you? Would you like to go on a date? But Pancake here, if he found another turtle and they had red eyes, he would say, hey, what are you doing in my territory? This is my home and I don't want you here. And so he may even fight that male Eastern box turtle. Do you think that Pancake here can just climb out of a shell if it's too heavy, like, huh, I've been lugging this shell around all day and I need to take a break. Do you think he can do that? No, he can't. He has to leave his shell on. It's actually attached to his body. Down along his back here is his spine. You have a spine too. If you just touch the, your back and you feel those little bumps, that's your spine. So you and Pancake both have that. And that's why if you ever see anyone pick up a turtle and knock on its shell, like, hello, is anyone home? You should ask that friend to leave that turtle alone because that can actually be very painful for a turtle, even though their shell is very strong. Pancake is an omnivore. What does that word mean? That means that he eats both plants and vegetables and meat. He eats all those things. And so he really likes fresh fruits and vegetables but he also really likes worms and grubs and snails or anything like that, even small fish that he can eat and get all that protein into his body. Humans are omnivores too. You might like chicken nuggets and french fries. And so you are also an omnivore. Something you can do to help turtles out in the wild is if you see a turtle crossing the road with your, and you are with your adult, you can ask your adult to see if it's safe to stop the car and to help that turtle cross the road. Because even though their shell is really strong, it's not strong enough to withstand a car accident. And so, with your adult, you can have them help move the turtle along the road. You wanna move the turtle in the direction that they are walking. Because if you turn the turtle around and put him the opposite way, he's just gonna say, hey, that was kind of a waste of time. I'd like to go in the direction that I was walking. And that is a great way to help turtle friends. If you would like to meet Pancake and any of our other animal friends, stop.
stop by the Nature Center. We're open Wednesdays through Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and also on Sundays from noon to 5 p.m. And Pancake here and all of his other animal friends would love to meet you. Okay, everyone, it's time for us to get up and explore. So grab those binoculars because we're going all over Shelby Township to find some beautiful flowers. So let's go take a look. It looks like we have a purple flower here and look at that. We have a bug climbing around on the top of the leaf. Do you see it come up? It's really exploring, maybe looking for its next meal. Oh no, where did it go? Look at what we have here. These are called flower buds. It's when our flower is not ready to bloom yet. So they're all together, the petals, until they're ready to open up. Now it looks like this tree has fully bloomed flowers. Pink and white flowers to be exact. We're looking at a magnolia tree. Next, we have very small, tiny flowers. Each one seems to have about five petals. And what is that I see? It looks like we get to end our adventure with a bee. All right, everyone, we have reached the end of our episode, but your adventure does not end here. So make sure you pick up those binoculars and you go outside and explore. Until next time, play fair, play nice, and play together. Bye.